Hey, 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 it's time for another video today. More of my two cents on the way. Okay, that's my intro for y'all because I'm not editing music into the video, okay? Just not gonna do it. Um, it's Christian here and I am so excited to talk about this topic today. But before we get started, let's do our three points that matter most. Number one, you are not alone. Number two, you are not crazy. And number three, God still loves you. Now you might be thinking, Christian, what do you mean my pastor is not... A therapist. That's exactly what I mean. That's just exactly I said what I said. Your pastor is not your therapist. This is a very tight but right conversation for a lot of people who are currently dealing with a lot of mental, um, mental health issues, a lot of instability, a lot of hurt, a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a lot of confusion a lack of clarity, a lack of peace, a lot of turmoil. It is time, especially in the black church, especially in the black community, for all of us to be more conscious and aware of our of our own well-being and the steps that we need to take in order to get there and to be whole and healed and happy. And I definitely want to say this from my own personal experience because there was a time um, when my husband and I in the church that we attended and we were heavily involved in, we did need some kind of counseling. We needed counseling and, you know, you want to trust that your pastor has your best interest at heart and will lead you and guide you, not just in scriptural things, but also in life, like just regular everyday life issues. And I'm going to tell you all this, like real talk. I feel like some pastors do not, they're not equipped to actually guide you on matters of life, issues of the heart, financial issues and problems. I feel like some pastors are just good at teaching scripture. I think that that's just where it ends for a lot of people. A lot of people are well-versed in scripture because it's like being a, hist a historian. Like you read so much of this, you know it inside and out, right? You can repeat it without even having to go to the, the page. You can repeat it without having somebody like start the sentence off for you. You know it front to back. That's what you've learned. That's what you've committed yourself to. And sometimes members in ministries simply need life on life advice. That is not talking about um, or not relating everything back to the Bible. Sometimes it's just man to man, right? Woman to woman, not pastor to member and first lady to submissive wife. Just what do I do? How do I balance family and career? How do I balance being married, right? And still wanting some independence. How do I balance um, wanting free time, but still wanting to be connected as a unit and not feeling bad, like mom guilt, right? Or um, the desire to pursue a uh, further degree in education, but we have four children and my husband is working really hard and I want to do something too. How do you manage these things? How do you manage trauma in your family, right? Being abused or sexually assaulted or um, bullied or you know, whatever the case may be and it's deep rooted issues and trauma but you have you go to your pastor and they slap a scripture on it nobody gives you real advice real wisdom let's pray about it right join this call get on this prayer call every week fast right break these soul ties sometimes i'm not saying that you may not find value in these things, right? But there are other resources that I feel it's time for pastors and leaders to responsibly, responsibly and respectfully start referring their members towards, right? I feel like as a leader, as a leader in business, if there are resources that my employees or my team members need that I cannot provide them with, like if my team members or employees need budgeting classes, I'm your employer, right? It's, I could present you, I can present you with resources for how to budget, but that's not something that I 
me can just be out here willy-nilly dishing out budget sheets to my employees. It's some things that are just out of the realm of, of capabilities. It's, there are just some things that we have to be okay and swallow pride and step aside and say, this is a better resource for you, son. This is a better resource for you, daughter. This is what you all actually need. Marital counseling and advice within um, church from your pastor can sometimes feel extremely uncomfortable. Trust me, I know. You don't, you're not going to divulge all of your issues and information because you're still going to be holding on to the fact that this person knows me. It's only so much I want to share and tell them because I'm going to have to look at them. I don't want them to know that my husband doesn't like this or he's unattracted to me or she doesn't please me orally or and I want this and she doesn't do that. And I've been looking at this other woman because my wife ain't. You're not going to divulge all of that information to your pastor, which keeps you from really getting all of the answers and the healing and the help and the assignments and the, you know, forward, the, the forward moving steps that you need to take. You're not going to be able to take them because you're going to be talking to somebody who's only operating on like 15% of the real problem. Can you imagine only having 15% of the information you need to do your job effectively at work? Like if they didn't give you everything, if they didn't give you everything you needed, you couldn't move forward and do all that you needed to do. You couldn't be the best that you could be if you only got 15% of the training. How do you expect me to do like 100% of my job when you only gave me 15% of the information? How? How sway? So if you have a real therapist, someone who can be unbiased, someone who's not going to judge you from a spiritual or a a non-spiritual standpoint, they simply want to get answers. They simply want to help you to discover, to unpack, to build some better uh, values, to build a better foundation, a pure, clean foundation, give you clarity, help you to process through some things that may really be keeping you from moving forward, some things that may really be keeping you in a stagnant space in life, in love, finances, there are a lot of issues sometimes, I'm not going to lie to you all, where prayer does not, is prayer is not the only answer. I am not sorry. <laughs> prayer is not the only answer. Some of y'all have been praying for a very long time. Very long. Like, long time. And you haven't gotten the answers, so to speak. The answers in which you think you should get, you haven't gotten them. And if you were to talk to your pastor, the first thing your pastor is going to say is, you pray about that? Have you heard from God? What has God told you concerning that? And that's even more of a deterrent that makes you feel like, wow, well, I just need to fast a little bit more. I need to consecrate myself a little bit more. I need to come to church a little bit more. And God will show me the answer then. That's not the proper plan. But your pastor is not going to tell you that. Your pastor is not going to say, I'm ill-equipped to actually deal with that. Right. I've struggled with that, too. And this is what I had to do. Some of them will come to you from a, a, a place of I used to when I was a kid, when I was a boy. Right. Before I got married to sister so and so. They'll, they'll come at you from a perspective or from a place of so far, you know, far back so long ago, long, 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 long time ago. They're not going to come at you with right now what they're dealing with. They're not going to bring in the correlation and connection of life on life. Like, yeah, that's actually a struggle for me sometimes too. Sometimes I don't want to come and preach. Sometimes I am tired. Sometimes I do want to take my wife on a vacation and say, hey, we're not having service this week, but I can't do that. And this is how I found balance. Don't feel guilty about that. Sometimes I do have to miss this in order to be here for my son or my daughter. I have had my children come to me and say, dad, I feel like you love the church more than me. You're not going to get pastors to tell you that all the time. That's why your pastor is not a good therapist. Because these are people who can't take the role and the title out of, right? They can't take the role and the title out of the relationship. They can't take the role and the title out of, huh, 
out of their life experiences. They can't separate the two. They have to always be in position. They always have to be perfect. They always have to be all knowing or they have to seem strong or seem like an expert or seem like a, a sovereign power so that you don't feel like, hmm, they ain't got it all together. That's actually what a therapist will help you to notice. Everybody doesn't have it all together. It's okay if you're still figuring out. Actually, you're going to be figuring it out for the rest of your life. You're never going to get it right. It's never going to be perfect. And anybody telling you or showing you or attempting to convince you that they have it right and they're perfect, they're lying to themselves. <laughs> they're lying to themselves because you know it's not perfect. You know it's not right. But this is consistently a standard that you feel like you're trying to meet because the whole past, the whole past, I don't know I'm doing this. There's been several situations where I know of people who go to other individuals within church to tell them about things that they've done that are wrong or that are sinful, but they won't go to their pastor because they don't want their pastor to see them differently. How effective do you think you actually are being as a minister, as a leader, as a pastor, if your members are afraid to even come and talk to you? And when you do have to call them in, for something that you've heard or seen, right? They feel ashamed. Immediately goes to, I'm so sorry. They're repenting to you. It's not even about a, I really want to know how to get over this for myself kind of restoration. It's a, I don't want you as my pastor to be displeased or disapprove or disapproving or disappointed or disgusted. I don't want to be separated from the love of my pastor. But what about the pastor being a human too and saying, I understand, right? I get it. It happens. You're not alone. If people felt more comfortable and confident in having that kind of dialogue and conversation in the confines of church, I, maybe I wouldn't have to tell you you needed a, uh, your pastor and your therapist. But majority of the time, pastors really don't have the tools. They really don't know how to come at you outside of scripture. They really feel like prayer is the key that unlocks every door. And that's not the case. Some people do need, um, <laughs> they do need more help. I, I'm, I'm trying to be careful with my words because I don't want to make people feel like they can't pray at all. But if that's what you believe will work for you, do that. But sometimes you need to couple that with something else. Sometimes you need to take different action. Sometimes you need a different plan. And it's okay. Sometimes you just simply need to vent. It's okay. My three points. You're not alone. You're not crazy. God still loves you. Point number two. You're not crazy. Counseling, therapy, you're not crazy. You're not. And if you do get diagnosed clinically, professionally, with something, an imbalance where you may have some form of a, a, a psychological issue, you're not crazy. There is something to balance that too. And it's not only prayer. Sometimes you may have to take a medication. Sometimes you may have to take a medication and go through group therapy or weekly therapy or counseling. Guess what? You're not alone. You're not the only one doing it. You're working. You're probably working in an office with five or six other people who have anxiety, suffer from depression, have had suicidal thoughts, suffer from trauma, have PTSD, right? Feelings of abandonment. You're not alone. But guess what? You're still loved. Your creator still cares about you. Your creator knows these things. Your pastor may want you to uh, do something that'll make you feel like you're delivered and just been washed away. But then you find yourself having relapses and falling back into it and then not getting better and not feeling strengthened because you need more. It's okay to need more. Some pastors are simply ordained to teach from the Bible. If I got ordained tomorrow, that would not make me 
by any means or, 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 or on any strength a doctor. There are still more lessons. There are still more life. There are still more teaching. There's still more information that I don't have that wouldn't just make me something else. A pa becoming a pastor doesn't automatically make you a great expert on all things concerning life. Give yourself that grace and say, it's okay if I have a therapist. <coughs> it's okay if it's not you. I knew what I needed to know when we had one meeting with our pastor. And the things that he was saying, he couldn't stay on topic for nothing. At one point during the conversation, I was like, why are we even here? This man ain't giving us no kind of wisdom or advice. He was ill-equipped. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean that you're a good therapist. It doesn't mean that you can connect with people. <coughs> Excuse me. It doesn't mean that you have what, what we need, right, to build a, a stronger foundation as a husband and wife couple. It's okay. It's okay to say that's not my expertise. That's not my calling. I don't have the answers, but let me refer you to someone who does. If you want a spiritual based counselor, they're out there. Unbiased opinion. Only desire is to help you find healing, wholeness, and happiness. That's what their goal is. They're not going to push scripture on you and force you to pray and to fast. They're going to actually give you real life advice, real tangible, applicable advice, wisdom. Go get it. And don't feel bad about it. You don't even have to tell anybody you're doing it. You're grown. But please quit giving extra PowerPoints to people who do not have the wisdom to help you actually elevate in certain areas of life. I would not again, as I said earlier, attempt to give budgeting advice to my employees. That's not my area. I can point you in the direction of some good sites or some helpful resources online, but that's not what I do. I know how to budget my books. I know how to keep my books clean and make sure I'm able, you know, I'm making my payroll and all of that. But just to be out here giving you financial advice, that's not what I do. And I'm okay with that. It takes a certain level of comfort and not feeling prideful to step out of that and say, hey, this couple needs more. You all need more work. I'm going to do that. I think about before my husband and I got married, I actually went to, uh, we went to one, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? Premarital counseling? Before we got married, one session. When I tell y'all, Nothing of importance was said or shared from the pastor. Nothing. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But again, I knew him. My husband knew him. So we didn't sit there and say anything. I lied and said I was a virgin. My husband admitted that he wasn't. But I'm out here like, mm-mm, nope. I have not been deflowered, okay? Come through, Holy Spirit. Um... But no, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel safe. I, there was pressure to, to keep this facade, right? To keep this facade of perfection for the person that was sitting in front of me. I had reverence for the person in front of me and not so much the overall experience and the honesty that needed to be there. But if I had have said that I had had sex before prior to marriage, what would he have been able to do? What would the difference have been? We're on year 13 of marriage and you're 16 together. So clearly longevity is not based on certain information or actions or experiences. But this is when you need a real life on life encounter to help you get that kind of clarity. And not so much the bondage that comes with you being afraid to express yourself to a spiritual figure, right? That you've placed on this hierarchy level that makes you feel like you have to do things that satisfy, please, and Get, gain their approval is bondage. It really is. And like, like I was saying, I know people who have gone to other church members to tell them about things they've done because they were afraid to actually go to their pastor. So the pastor is sitting there thinking that the flock is, is whole, delivered, happy, and following all of, all of the teachings. But they're doing whatever because they just are too afraid to actually come and talk to you. 
They have real life issues, real marital issues, real familial issues, real mental issues. But the pressure is too much to seem perfect that they don't even want to share it. That's bondage. So this is my, this is what I would like to suggest and encourage. If you do need help, if you do want to share, if you don't feel comfortable going to your pastor, to your leader, seek outside counsel. It's absolutely okay to do it. Sometimes we think that prayer will answer everything, that will get deliverance from going through a prayer line and being on phone calls, you know, weekly phone calls. And you'll feel okay for a little bit because that's an emotional encounter, right? You have a lot of people praying, some speaking in tongues, some speaking directly to you and prophesying to you. And you feel like you're connecting and like they're really getting to uh, the point that you're at and like pinpointing your situation. But to be honest with you, it's a band-aid. It's a comfort point for you where you just feel comforted um, because you know these people. And because they know you. But you need more. And it's okay to seek more. It's okay to be able to go to someone who can tell you, hey, those thoughts that you're having are normal. They're natural. The desires you're having are normal. They're natural. But this is how we can counteract them. Right? Here are some, um, here are some tools. Here are some uh, ways that you can, you know, get yourself out of situations that may not be good for you. Here's some ways for you to detach from people who have hurt you. Here's some trigger points that we discovered, like during your counseling sessions. This is a trigger. This is how you help yourself out of it. This is a trigger. This is how you stay away from those kind of points or people. These are ways for you to use discernment when certain things are happening. This is advice and information that pastors are not going to always know to give you because they're not trained in that area. They're just not. So. Don't feel guilty about going forward and getting counseling. Don't feel guilty about seeing a therapist. You're not crazy. You're not alone. God still loves you. There's help for you. There's hope for you. There's more for you, okay? Um, and if your pastor speaks against mental health and, and therapy and counseling, um, I think you should question that individual and, and their knowledge and their intent on trying to deter you as an individual, as a human who has life experiences that need more than prayer and fasting. I don't see how anybody with a, a, a good conscious conscience could tell someone else that therapy or counseling is ungodly or is wrong or it's not necessary. I have heard, heard a pastor recently tell, the, tell his congregation um, therapy shouldn't be your first response. You shouldn't be going to see no mental health, uh, no mental health professional first. You should be on your knees first. Okay. Okay. And the more people are told things like that, the more afraid they are to actually go and get help. You're breaking down someone's will to actually uh, seek guidance from professionals that can actually help them because you can't. I know pastors talk about answering phone calls late in the midnight hour. That don't mean nothing. So people may call your phone and be scared, be sad, be upset or whatever. But do you actually follow up with counseling sessions for them every week? Are you actually asking them about traumas? Are you actually letting them lie back and, and go through some, some, some steps, some questions? Do you actually have the tools to help them? And I ain't talking about from a deliverance standpoint, but I mean a whole healing, happy plan and course of action to live a normal, balanced life. Probably not. But if y'all want to keep putting band-aids over things with prayer and meditate and, uh, with prayer and fasting, go right ahead. You're going to find yourself in that same situation because your leader may not have the tools to help you build a strong foundation to actually balance life in a lot of the pressures and the anxieties that come with it. And you're doing yourself a disservice if you only hold yourself to the scripture that they're going to throw at it. And that's not always fair for you. So um, hopefully this, this helps you just gain some clarity that your pastor doesn't know it all. And it's okay. They're just a man or a woman. And they're going to help you as much as they can. But you too have to take some, some responsibility and accountability to help yourself. 
all right, by any means necessary. There are a lot of different resources, even if you don't want to go into an actual physical office. There are a lot of online resources where you can have therapy, counseling sessions, um, life coaches, mentors, all of that. You can do that from the comfort of your own home, um, discretion, and you have the privilege of your business staying right there with the person you talk to not worried about your past or going home telling the pastor's wife and then the pastor's wife telling her friend or her children or anything like that. See, you pay your ties to go talk to somebody that don't really have no information for you versus you actually filing an insurance claim for a therapist or paying a couple of, you know, $25, $45, $100 for an hourly person who's unbiased, don't know you, don't care after you get done talking, they just want to help you. And they ain't going to tell nobody about it because they can get in trouble legally. All right? Okay. Okay. So thank you guys for watching my two cents. This is just my two cents on pastors and therapists. They are not the same and it's okay to move forward with a therapist in Jesus name. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.